Hi guys, Manny Chima here from Glass Hammer Gaming and you are watching another 40k tips, tricks and combos video for all the latest tips and tricks in Warhammer 40k. Please hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell below so you know when each new video is released. Enjoy the following video guys. Today's video guys is all about how to play against the Grav Bomb. So this is the second video. The first one was why the Grav Bomb is so good and this one is all about how to play against the Grav Bomb. So, in my opinion, there are three main ways of playing against the Graf Bomb. Number one is invulnerable saves. Having units with good invulnerable saves, shall we say, like a six of invulnerable save isn't going to help you. That's, you know, that's just not going to happen. But something like an Impulsor with a four of invulnerable save could be the perfect thing to put your troops in because it will soak up quite a lot. I mean, even... Even a Grav Bomb, say, say it's a Salamander's Grav Bomb. Salamander's Grav Bombs are one of the best because they can, they can have plus one to wound and also four rerolls to wound. So even if that was shooting at, say, an Impulsor, you know, they'd, they'd sort of, they got 20 shots, basically. 12 of them hit on threes with rerolls if, the, if there's a Chapter Master nearby. Um, so say there is, say there is, and they get like 10 hits with those 12 shots. Then they've got another eight shots which hit on twos rolling ones because they can ignore the penalty for moving and firing with heavy weapons. So it is like a 3 CP combo, ignoring the penalty, plus one to wound and four rerolls to wound, and rolls on damage. 3 CP combo, but it can be used to like do like a big hit. Say somebody used all three, they'd get roughly 18 hits on you, because eight shots hitting on two rolling ones is basically eight hits. So get 18 hits on you in total. Then they're wounding on fours, which is nine, with rerolls, could be 13, 13 wounds. Then from 13 wounds, you've got a four up in Now you, 13, if you tilt slightly on the other way, say you pass seven and fail six, only six go through. That basically, just about averagely, kills an Impulsor. But at the end of the day, you've lost a, you've lost a 130 point Impulsor instead of losing like the squad inside. Now, you know, the squad inside could be an Intercessor squad with assault, you know, auto bolt rifles that are three shots each and AP minus one from turn two. So most likely if you've been, if your Impulsor's nuked, you're going to get out with those, move them, and shoot back at the graph pod, because you can. And now those guys are 120, 120 points, and you probably should kill three or four of them with an, with an Intercessor squad with auto bolt rifles, or even bolt rifles, because they become AP minus two. So, you know, you could clear them back in that way, and if you look at the deficit, you're kind of going, yeah, but I've only killed a 120-point squad. However, you know, you've lost a 130-point Impulsor, but you've killed a 120-point squad, that also has come out of a 70 point drop pod. So they, they're effectively 200 points and you've killed that and lost 130 point transport, but your good unit that's inside it is still running around. So I think that's one of the ways of dealing with the graph pod is having units with solid invulnerable saves. Things like Death Guard, Poxmongers, they'll be really good, like Plague Burst Crawlers running at the front of your army with toughness eight and a four up invun, but also a five up disgustingly resilient. One of them should not die, even if Salamanders use all that stuff. So, you know, they do the same same sort of thing. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Say they roll 14 wounds on you, wounding on fours with re-rolls. You then got a four up invent, so seven go through. Now, seven is normally 14 damage. But what I normally do is add one to it because they've got re-rolls on damage. So 15 damage, say. They do 15 damage to your Plague Burst Crawler. You lose 10 wounds after Disgusting Resilient. But you're still alive, basically. And you could heal wounds and stuff like that. So I think things like Death Guard don't even worry about a drop pod because they have tough units like that that they can push to the front and the grab will only be able to hit those so that's the first way the second way guys is dirt cheap screen that's my favorite way of dealing with the grab bomb is dirt cheap screen so you know things like cultists 10 cultists which is 60 points you know nobody wants to waste a grab unit that's 200 points in the pod to kill a 60 point cultist squad so that's, that's a really good way of doing it, I think. And things like Guardsmen are perfect because they can move, move, move. So, you know, they advance out, then they advance out again, and they sort of make this big aura where, you know, the drop pod drop pods have got to come nine away from them, and then they won't be able to shoot, like, your tank commanders and, you know, or whatever allies you've got with your Guardsmen that are, that are in the middle of the board. They won't be able to get to them because they're surrounded by Guardsmen. So that's, that's a second way. That's my most favourite way of dealing with them. And then the third way... I think is units that have got units that are tough but a different style of tough. So, you know, you have your you have your whole plague burst crawler level of tough. That's one way. But the other level of tough I mean is like a tough unit in terms of 
is toughness five or more with multiple wounds, but worse than a three up save. Because the minute you only have a four up armor save or worse, the grav bomb becomes one damage against you. Instead of D3 damage, all the attacks do one damage. And I think that's a massive, massive detriment to the grav bomb. Like, if they try and shoot something that's tough but doesn't necessarily have a three up save, they're not gonna do very many wounds anyway. So things like Chaos Spawn are incredible. If you run Death Guard, you could have a Noxious Blightbringer that gives them all a five up invulnerable save, and you can pay a command point to give the unit a five up disgustingly resilient as well. And then this Chaos Spawn unit just runs out and goes, you can roll 14 wounds against us, but that's fine because we've got a five up invun, so only nine will go through. Then we have five disgusting resilience, so only six will go through. That's one and a half spawn dead. You've just killed 23 points. 23 points in spawn and a half. So like 36 points you'll kill uh, with a grav bomb. So I think those kind of units have got a massive merit. Things like Necron tanks, Necron um, doomsday arcs and ghost arcs because they've only got a four up save and they do have 14 wounds. So they're probably not gonna go down to a grav bomb, especially because the grav bomb wound them on like fives with rerolls and stuff. So I think those are the three main ways, in my opinion, of dealing with the Grav Bomb. So that's tough, invulnerable save units, tough units with high toughness, multiple wounds, and worse than a three up save, and also really cheap screen. Really cheap screen is my favorite way of doing it, guys. I think that's the, that's the best way of dealing with the Grav Bomb. If you guys have any other cool little tips and tricks to playing against the grav bomb please leave them in the comments so everybody can share in in that knowledge and then not get caught out by grav bombs i hope you enjoyed the video guys take care